Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this example, I'm going to show you how to create a simple make file. So here I've got a few files open. I've got this main.cpp file that we're looking at. And inside of here, we've got our main function. And all the main function does is it creates this message object and we're calling that object M. And then our message object M calls its print message function. So the information to create the message object comes from the message.h file. So if we take a peek at that, we've got file guards here and ending here. And the file guards are just protecting the body of our message.h file from being included more than one time. And so what we're doing here is we've got a class, we're naming that class message, and we're saying that message objects have this function called print message, and that message does not return any value. And so then if we go take a look at message.cpp, we can see we're defining a function from the message class print message. That's the one we just saw. And all it does is it prints a message to the screen and it says make file example. So there's not a lot going on here, but there's enough information going on here that we can kind of see what's happening when we create a make file. So if we look at our make file right now, it's completely empty. Going over to our terminal, if I type ls, you can see I'm in the directory that contains those four files that we just looked at. So if I was to compile this here, I could just simply type g++ main.cpp message cpp and message.h is already included in both of these so if i push enter it will just include all the code we need and it will create an executable called a.out so now that we've compiled that we'll do ls again and we can see our new executable called a.out here and we can invoke it by typing dot forward slash a.out and we can see our printed message that says make file example. So if we just have a few files, we can just go ahead and do this and compile everything together. That's not really a big deal. But if we had, let's say a thousand or 10,000 files that all had to be compiled together to create this program, we probably, first of all, wouldn't want to type a thousand file names here in the command line to compile our program. And the other thing is, is that might take a really long time. And so what we're really going to want to do is we'll just want to compile the pieces that are necessary to compile based on the changes that we made to our program. So if we go over here to this make file, the basic structure of a make file, we're going to have a target and then we'll put a colon and then we're going to have dependencies and then we're going to go down one line and we'll make sure we have a tab here and that our target is the very left of the page. Make files are white space sensitive. So this is all the way to the left. We've got exactly one tab of space here. And then here we're going to perform some sort of action. So let's go ahead and leave this on the bottom here as something we can look back at as we create our make file. So the make file is going to look at the top target here as its primary target. And so I'm going to call mine output because that's what I'm going to name my executable. And I want to recreate my executable anytime that my object files main.o and message.o change. And so you're probably going, wait a second, I didn't see those files. Where are these .o files coming from? So we'll get to how these are created in just a second. But what we're going to do when there's a change in either one of those is we're going to go ahead and just recompile both of those into a single executable that we're going to name with this minus O flag, and we're just going to name this executable output. So this is saying anytime that main.o or message.o change, we're going to recompile the two of them together into this executable that we've named output. All right, so let's go ahead and instruct our make file how to create the main.o and the message.o object files. So starting with the main.o, we'll create a target for that. And we're going to want to create this anytime that main.cpp changes. To create this object file, we're just going to say g++ minus c main.cpp. So what this is saying is it's saying, go ahead and compile all the code in here. And then the minus c flag says, don't try to create an executable, but instead just compile this into an object file, a file that the computer can understand. And by default, when we use the minus c flag, it will keep the name of the file, but instead of .cpp, it will remove the cpp and replace it with a .o. So this is how we're creating the main.o object file. So let's go ahead and create a target for message.o now. So for my target, I'll put message message.o and I want to create message.o anytime that message.cpp 
or message.h has been modified. And to create the message.o object file, I'll just call g++. We're going to do the minus c flag again, saying that we don't want to create the executable. We just want to compile this into an object file. And we're just going to compile the message.cpp file. So this command here compiles the message.cpp into a message.o object file. This command right here compiles the main.cpp file into a main.o object file. And then this instruction here says go ahead and compile both of those object files into an executable that we have named output. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. That was just kind of a placeholder. I think we've got the point now. And then I'm going to add one more rule here. And I'm going to call this one clean. And this one doesn't depend on anything. This is just something we can invoke from the command line. So I'll just push enter, we'll tab over. And then here I'm just going to remove all of our object files. So the star means match anything. So anything that ends in the .o extension will be removed when we invoke this clean target here. And we're also going to remove output. So we'll see how this is used also. So we'll save our make file now. Going back to our terminal, Going to clear the screen. If I do an ls, we can see we've got our four files plus our a dot out here. So now that we've got our make file in place, if I simply type the word make, we can see we're creating the main.o file here. We're creating the message.o file here. And then we're going to go ahead and compile and link these two together. And we're going to name the executable from that output. So now if we type ls, we can see that we've got our .o files here and here. And we've got our executable named output. So now if I do dot forward slash output, we can see the results of our program, which simply prints the message make file example. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen. And now if I try to invoke make again, it doesn't do anything because it recognizes that there's nothing that's really been changed. We don't need to compile this again. It's already up to date. If I run make clean, we can see that it runs the clean command that we invoke. So that's this last one right here. So it just ran the remove all the .o files and remove our executable. So now when I type ls, all the .o files and our executable that was named output is gone. So if I type make again, it goes ahead and recreates our program. And if I type ls, everything's back. And I can run our executable once again by typing in dot forward slash output. And we get the output from our program that says make file example. So let's say that we change our message. So if we go to message.cpp, then we can just say, okay, we don't want this to say make file example anymore. So instead for our message, we want to say hello. So we can save this file now, go ahead and clear this. And now when I run make, you can see it only ran two of the rules here. It invoked this g++ minus c message.cpp. That's this action right here. So that means it detected a change in message.cpp or message.h. In this case, it detected a change in message.cpp since that's the file we changed. Notice that it didn't invoke this command right here because there was no changes in main.cpp. So we can see g++ minus c main.cpp is not here because it didn't need to recompile that part of our program to make our new executable. So if I run dot slash output, I get our new message, hello. Notice that it did invoke this action right here, which comes from this rule. Once this command was completed, we have a new message.o file. So then this rule here detected that there was a change in the message.o file. And so it reran this command. That's why we see both this line and this line being executed, but we don't see this line being executed because we didn't have a change in our main.cpp file. So let's go ahead and make a change in our main.cpp file and we can see the difference here. So if I just say touch main.cpp, all that's going to do is it's not really going to change the contents of the file, but it will give the main.cpp file a new timestamp. So as far as make is concerned, this is considered a change to the main.cpp file. So I push enter and now if I type make again, this time it detected a change in the main.cpp file because here we say we want to invoke this rule anytime that main.cpp changes. So it detected that and then it also detected that a new object file main.o was created. Anytime that changes, it invokes this rule right here and we can see that rule right there. When we run our executable, we should see the hello message again since the only thing we did was update the timestamp. So you can see here how this would work if we had several thousand files. If we set up our make file correctly, then when we recreate our executable, we're only going to recompile the pieces necessary for us to create the output correctly. So anyway, I think that was a pretty good introduction to make files. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.